part of the West Bank that's the narrowest. It is a corridor that extends out from Jerusalem. When these lands are taken by the State of Israel and extended a little bit further, the State of Israel has effectively cut off northern uh, the West Bank from the southern West Bank and has effectively created three Palestines. Northern Palestine, Southern Palestine, and Gaza. And I guess you can say the old theory, the old strategy of divide and conquer is alive and well here. This also falls under the definition of ethnic cleansing. I've been criticized by some uh, protective Jews, uh, Israeli Jews, saying this is not ethnic cleansing. Ethnic cleansing is if you kill an ethnic group and replace it with another. But that's the most serious form of ethnic cleansing. That is genocide. That's not happening here. But a part of the ethnic cleansing definition is if you transfer people or imprison an ethnic group, transfer an ethnic group somewhere, or imprison them and replace them with another ethnic group, that is ethnic cleansing. This is a serious violation of international law. The UN uh, representatives as well as the European Union say that this is most likely a war crime what is going on here. These type of policies, these imperialistic policies, uh, are dangerous for Israel to the extent that um, the state of Israel, I mean, my, many of my Israeli friends feel that, okay, even the humanitarian ones, yes, but we are very powerful. We have one of the strongest armies in the world, one of the upcoming, one of the strongest potential economies in the world. But they seem to forget that Jews were thrown out in the diaspora twice before. It could start that Israel is more and more isolated as well, along with the U.S. Um, more and more, the BDS movement is is, is building. Um, I, I, I don't agree with all of it. I don't necessarily, I don't think I agree with the, the BDS movement when it comes to restricting professors because Israeli professors tend to be very liberal and not allow them to travel, and vice versa. Uh, and foreign professors to come as re reciprocity. I'm not sure about that, but this is building. And this isolation is not good for Israel. It's not good for the Israeli people either. So we need, a lot of the Israeli people, uh, thinking globally again, need to open up their eyes. They're kind of in the different communities in Israel, like in a bubble. Don't, don't really know clearly what's going on around them and what's, what's happening in their names. And often they read the news. It tends to be filtered. But not just in Israel. I live in France. I'm also I'm French American. The news is also being filtered. We need to educate ourselves, and the activists here today, as you uh, filming this, are here on behalf of humanitarian reasons and purposes, not to give up because it is a desperate situation. Because there's, it's a, even though there's activists here willing to do something, it's going to be difficult to uh, to face the bulldozers. No matter how many people we can activate, but we're here anyway in numbers and hoping that the world will open up its heart and realize this is wrong. But we need to come together because everyone is connected. This is another illusion. People on the other side of the world look to, to, to the Holy Land and say, well, that's the Holy Land, but what does that have to do with me? What does that have to do with the price of beans to feed my kids with? Well, we are connected. It's like the avatar tree and the roots. We are connected. We cannot say that. We can never say that. We're all connected. We need to come together. No matter where people are in the world that need help, it could be us someday. We need to help. And that's why we're here today.